This is the lock picking lawyer, and there are a lot of smart locks on the market, so it can be pretty hard for a product to distinguish itself. Well, this one made by Lockley does just that. It does all the normal things you'd expect of an expensive smart lock. We have a keypad, fingerprint reader, Bluetooth, but it also has a self-randomizing keypad. This, of course, makes eavesdropping a fair bit harder because with multiple numbers per button, even if you see exactly what buttons were pressed, you've only narrowed it down to about 700 plus combinations on a six digit code, and the buttons will be different the next time. It also makes it far less likely that a wear pattern on the keypad will compromise security. To demonstrate, I currently have this set to 123456. And we'll do that again. You can see it's a completely different movement. Now, as for pick resistance, it's not great, but it's also not terrible. It has a six pin leg style cylinder, which does have a couple of security pins in it. So it will require at least some skill to pick open. We're going to give it a try using the appropriate SC4 leashy tool. I of course sell these over on covertinstruments.com. Going to place the lock on its side so you can see exactly what I'm doing with the leashy. Okay, one is springy, so is two, three, four, five, six is binding tightly. There we go, nice click out of six, five is binding, four is binding, click there, nothing on three, little click on two, nothing on one, let's work our way back. Five is binding, click out of six. It might be that we have tapered driver pins, which make you pick each pin a couple of times. You can see we're getting a couple clicks on each of these pins. Two is binding very tightly. See, nothing on three, four, five again. Click out of four. Click out of two, we just dropped into a false set. One is binding, so that's almost certainly a spool. We're allowing some counter rotation. And we just got that open. Okay, folks, as you can see, that wasn't too hard, but it did require a little bit of time. I will note that this does use a standard format of key and knob cylinder, so replacing it with something a little more robust is also fairly easy. In any case, that's all I have for you today. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.